Brooklyn Independent Television. From Diker Heights to Ditmas Park, from cannolis to strombolis, Carlos Chisura knows Brooklyn and its business community. The former chief of staff to Brooklyn's number one booster, Marty Markowitz, recently took the reins of the century-old Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. In this new role, he represents over 1,400 of the borough's small and large companies. As he takes office, he is charting a course to help them leverage Brooklyn's newfound popularity into an economic engine for New York City. Carlo, thanks for being here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Great. So listen, I've, I've known you for many years. I've had the pleasure of working with you in several different capacities. I know you're passionate about Brooklyn and its business community, but let's start with just your overall opinion of, of Brooklyn's economy and, and where it's going these days. Well, look, everyone can see just from what's happening in Brooklyn. It's hot, it's cool, it's hip, things are happening, people are moving here. There's excitement in the borough. Um, last night I was at Barbra Streisand, 18,000 people having a great time. Uh, last week, Jay-Z did eight shows. The Nets and the Knicks are playing. I mean, there is just a buzz of energy surrounding Brooklyn. Um, I think, you know, some statistics came out last week about the economy and how things are improving throughout New York City. But, you know, I tell people all the time, we have to watch, watch and be sure that all of Brooklyn is eating, that all of Brooklyn is really a part of this renaissance. It can't just be that certain neighborhoods get the buzz and the excitement and the fun, and certain neighborhoods, such as places in central Brooklyn, still have 25, 30% unemployment, particularly among African-American young men. That's something that we all collectively in Brooklyn have to look at. So while we cheer the, Knicks com the Nets coming, while we cheer the buzz around neighborhoods like Williamsburg and downtown Brooklyn and Prospect Heights and all these neighborhoods, we have to be vigilant that we're creating jobs and making sure that everyone in Brooklyn is really realizing this great dream. So in your role as, as the new chamber president, and I, and I know you want it to be a chamber for the entire borough, uh, what are some of the strategies you're going to use to reach out to some of these other neighborhoods that have still yet to benefit from some of the economic transformation? You know, it, it, it's amazing. I tell people the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce represents every neighborhood in Brooklyn. Look, you mentioned it, from Diker Heights to Ditmas Park. Uh, you could say from Bay Ridge to Bedside, from Sunset Park uh, to Starrett City. I mean, we have neighborhoods that really need help. Um, our job at the Chamber is make sure that both small and big businesses know that we're there for them. So if you're a young person looking for a job in East New York, come to the Chamber. We will help you. We'll hook you up through one of our many programs, whether it's our Small Business Services Center or our Good Help program. We will help you find the job. If you're an employer uh, looking for the best talent, come see us. We have a good database. Um, if you're a restaurant or a shop starting up in Bay Ridge or in Coney Island or in Sheepshead Bay, come see us. We can help you walk through the process of getting your business up and running and then networking, having you meet people from across the borough. It's important that our reach extend not just in certain neighborhoods. We really have to be the borough's uh, economic development engine and the borough small business engine, and I think that's what we're doing. So one, I know one of the industries that you care deeply about uh, is manufacturing. Yep. And uh, you know, if people don't realize it, but Brooklyn <clears throat> still has a sizable manufacturing base here in, in the borough. Uh, what are some of the things that the chamber could do to help strengthen manufacturing? Sure. So you know, uh, you know, a, a great program that you were involved in many years ago called Brooklyn Eats. Um, it's, it's all about Brooklyn and eating and food. So we're going to bring it back this year. It's, it's been away for a while, but we're bringing it back with a little different twist. We're going to say to Brooklyn's food manufacturers, which are growing rapidly, what can we do to help you? So we're going to create a Brooklyn Eats program around everyone making something in Brooklyn. So if you're making soda, if you're jarring pickles, if you're making cannolis, fortune cookies, I mean, I can go on and on. We're going to put on this amazing show for all of these Brooklyn-made products, and we're going to showcase them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say to each of them, what are your needs? And it's urgent, by the way. There is an urgent need to say to these companies, what will keep you in Brooklyn? As you grow, what will make you grow your business here? How will we make sure that you don't go to Jersey or Connecticut or North Carolina when you go from 
five employees to 50 employees. So these are things that the chamber is really going to look at. We're going to do a borough-wide economic strategy and study on what we need to do. We're going to work with the city council and the administration and the borough president's office and say, look, this is what we've identified. For these small businesses to grow here and to manufacture in Brooklyn, they need these lists, five things, six things, seven things. What can we do quickly so that we have room for them here? So another issue that is uh, very important to small businesses in, in New York City and, and certainly in Brooklyn is health insurance. Yeah. And I know the Chamber has, in many ways, has been a pioneer in helping small businesses to access health insurance. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, as you know, we run Brooklyn Health Works, which is an incredible program. We um, insure employees at almost 1,000 companies throughout the borough, which is amazing. Um, and it's not as simple as just insuring employees anymore or letting employers know that this program exists. With health care reform happening you know, in 12, 13 months, it's going to be the Chamber's job to now move quickly to educate Brooklynites, to educate small businesses, and to let them know what's happening. So we're planning a major spring symposium on the future of health care, how it affects Brooklyn business owners, small business owners, uh, uh, employees at these businesses. Um, we hope to announce soon, and I'm going to give you a little scoop, Randy, scoop. since you're like a dear scoops. friend. Um, <laughs> Right now, to, to enroll in Brooklyn Health Works, you have to be a, a two or more person business. Uh, we hope to announce in the new year that we're going to be insuring solos and solo practitioners, independent contractors, one person operations, which will also revolutionize that, what we're doing in Brooklyn. That is uh, fantastic because Brooklyn has a high concentration of people who work out of their homes Absolutely. as a single consultant or practitioner. Absolutely. So I, and look, a lot of the new industry in Brooklyn yeah. is a one-person operation. Right. Uh, if you're a graphic designer, if you're a tech company, sometimes it's just one person working. We should be able to reach out to that person and say, hey, we are here for you. Brooklyn Health Works is here for you. Come on in and, and we'll help you out. So what are some of the other things that you hope to see in the next coming uh, two or three years as, uh, under your leadership at the Chamber? So I, I think, you know, uh, jobs, 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 number one issue. How do we make it easy for people to work in Brooklyn, to move around Brooklyn? Uh, we're going to be doing a major transportation study. Um, how does transportation affect Brooklyn? Uh, one thing I would love to see the Chamber get very involved in working with elected officials, is making sure that ferry service grows. Um, I love Williamsburg to downtown Brooklyn ferry service. It's wonderful. Brooklyn Bridge Park is amazing. But how about ferry service from Brooklyn Bridge Park to Bay Ridge, to Canarsie, to Coney Island? Imagine that. Imagine if you work in Canarsie. If you live in Canarsie and you work downtown Brooklyn, you can hop a ferry and be at work in 20 minutes. These are things we need to look at because by doing that, you increase the job base, you do something for the employees, and it's, it's wonderful. So transportation, big issue. Um, looking at tourism, how do we increase tourism? How do we increase people not just walking over the bridge or touching Brooklyn? Let's have them stay here, and then let's get them out into the borough. Let's get them to Canarsie. Let's get them to Coney Island. Sure. Let's get them to the ethnic communities and spend money in our ethnic businesses and that creates jobs. So just quickly, because we only have a few seconds yep. left, but I know the recent relaunch of the Good Help program has been a huge <clears throat> success. Yes. Do you want to touch upon that? Sure. So Good Help is, is a wonderful program that we do in conjunction with the City of New York, the City Council. Uh, we work to place individuals in jobs. We work with companies. A company comes to the chamber and says, hey, I need 20 employees. We make it happen, and uh, it's, been, it's been amazing. And it's been helpful to my business as well. Yes, it has. So it's we thank great. you for that. Uh, Carlo, I am, I am very, very proud and, and, and happy that you're, you're in this role, and I want to wish you great success moving forward. Thank Thanks you. for being here. It's, it's an exciting time to be in Brooklyn. It certainly is. Thank you. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.